there, beloved Ascension Pioneers, and welcome to another update with me about divine relationships. So, divine partnerships. I've had so many videos on this topic, and yet when I communicate with people, I see there's still so much more. Firstly, there's still so much more of old that we're grabbing onto, and there's still so much of the new that we haven't even yet begun to explore. So, um, I've been noticing that a lot of the knowledge <laughs> that comes to us, pours through the World Wide Web. It comes through the internet. So this is learned. This is not intrinsic inner knowing of your soul as it remembers itself, as through its own heavenly creation self and realizing its own truth through internal knowing. It's not the same as when you read something online. Let's say you read a, a page about twin flames and there's something that feels right to you and um, because it sounds so fancy and because a lot of the things that are written there feel so wow to you and you somehow say, well, that must be the truth. It feels good. Let me tell you firstly that not all that feels good will be the ultimate truth because a lot of the times what feels good for us is that which makes us which feeds our illusions because it keeps us in this state that is very much closed in this bubble. So today Spirit showed me this vision that when we really are expanding, either or not, <laughs> in our own soul bubble of uniqueness, what's happening is because of this free will to experience, we might be in our own bubble, in our own reality, and let's say there's even a group of people who have created their own reality, and through that bubble, because let's say, for example, that all I would know in my life would be this tiny room. And um, in this room, I've never experienced nothing different than that room, so I think that's the only reality. In many, many years, first time <laughs> in my history, I go out and there's a whole new world out there. There's whole new perspectives and there's things to explore and experience, so reality expands. So this is something Spirit showed me today with the bubbles. It's like we all have this tiny, tiny impenetrable, sh impenetrable shield that is fed to us through these filters. And as long as we still have those filters, our bubble will be very tiny, tiny, tiny. And in that bubble, our reality will exist as it is. This will be our truth. In that um, momentary time, sometimes it might even feel as the ultimate truth for us. But then maybe once we're ready to burst the bubble, we're going to come to a different truth and we're going to find a new space to play with and to explore and to see what all is out there waiting yet to be discovered when we expand in our awareness. So a lot of the times, let's say, we think and we confuse this bubble that we have created as our own reality with the reality of absolute. And let me tell you the source of all, it's not a particular being, it's all. So it doesn't have any particular bubble, bubbleness. It doesn't have like a bubble structure. It has no wall. So therefore, as long as we still have those, we're not open. So what we like to do as humans, I'm noticing, we like to label things. Not just label, we, we like to categorize them, we like to put things in boxes. So in my own time and research and what I've been observing, what's happening in this phenomena, especially the twin flame phenomenon on World Wide Web, is that there are basically a few categories that we, we put relationships into and we say that's it. So we have karmic, we have soulmates, and then we have twin flames. And there's no depth, there's no variety. Things are very much black and white when you perceive things like that. When we really live our relationships, let's say those are our beliefs, and this is what we think we know. And let's say when we live our reality, we have a different um, experience because we feel, we experience, we interact. And sometimes we encounter situations that we can't put in either of those boxes. And that is why a lot of the people can't compartmentalize this way okay and they say I met this person but it's not like it's my soulmate also I don't know if it's my twin flame I don't know what that is and they get confusion and you know that within the illuminated truth of all there is no space for confusion because when you really are in truth there's no illusion there there's no confusion illusion is confusion truth is not so therefore what happens is because we're so used to putting things in boxes we like to do that and the closest thing we can relate to is we say, okay, that must be this. And a lot of the things what we do is because a certain relationships awakens us to a new profound level, because it's an awakening experience, people usually refer to that, it must be twin flame, because it awakens their senses, it helps them to connect with different psychic levels, it's telepathic more than ever before. These are just basic awakening symptoms. 
but it doesn't necessarily mean that that now this reality you're experiencing in this bubble will be the ultimate I've shared this before in my videos, I talked about this before, how the beloved is the truth of creation. So in order for us to really know ourselves as the twin soul, we need to experience ourselves as the uniqueness and creation and variation of creation as a soul that we are. Diverse, unique, deep. Our experiences in many layers of the dimensions are profound. In those levels of the self, when we exist as we're expanded, we're not putting things in boxes. Only humans do that unenlightened humans, unknowledgeable humans. And I'm not talking about research, internet-based knowledge because that's not true source of knowledge. Watch my previous video for that. What is the pursuit of true truth and what is that which we perceive as knowledge? So that which we will gather through the internet and we will make certain conclusions about, well, that is obviously the truth about Twin Flames. I meet somebody, must be that, because now everybody's speaking about this. This is a new phenomena that's taking place right now. And to be honest, I, I'm not sharing what I'm sharing within this tiny bubble. I'm trying to show you the perspective when you burst and pop your bubble and you start to connect with all of life and creation, with relationships that are profound, that are in many layers, many dimensions, many parallel realities even. You can't put those true soul relationships in boxes. When I tried to do that in my own reality, what's that person to me? You know, am I serving them? Is it this or that? It didn't work. I felt like I'm trying to capture myself in some sort of bubble, like I'm talking about now. And this is not the same when I say the bubble of divine love, because that's different. That bubble has no barrier, nothing limits it. It's unlimited. It's pure love. And it experiences things through intimacy, interaction, enlightened um, connections. So we like to do that. And what, what's taking place, let's take an example when we make such an assumption. And the first person who really on our path resonates to us as the closest they can get to us on our soul level, immediately we jump to a conclusion must be twin flame. Let's take into account that we have our human consciousness here, which a lot of times the brain is very limited. And when we start, you know, taking those databases from these mind programs that we have, kind of like a computer, you know, and makes a, when you're trying to do a computer-based speech, it comes out very um, robotic, right? Because it, it takes these extrapolated um, tiny variables and it makes them into a whole and it turns out not completely authentic. It can never be as deep as human speech, no matter how much we try to imitate it. It's the same as this. We can't put these relations that are completely divine in nature, no matter what they are, you know, what you're connecting to, we can't make them like this. The moment we do so, we're not coming from our pure divine love state of being. We're not coming from enlightened consciousness. We're coming from a very instrumental approach, very mental. We need to compartmentalize. We need to have a database. We need to have, we need to know exactly what it is. And we forget about the basic thing, mystery of life in spirit. And a lot of the times when you will ask yourself, a true, true answer <laughs> through your soul will be, if you really connect to your soul will be, not all things are meant to be known to you. Not all things can be compartmentalized by you. Not all things are meant to be analyzed. And let's say you are a twin soul because everybody is created through the polarity of expression of divine, feminine, and masculine essence. It's not the same as gender. As humans, we have gender. On another level, where we're more expanded, we don't have gender anymore. We only have essences. Even like we talk about angels, we say some maybe have more masculine form, some maybe have more female form, but it's still, it's still just an essence, okay? It's not the same as gender. It's very androgynous. Androgyny is not the absence of gender nor it is the absence of essence. It is merely both essences, divine, masculine, feminine, and one in complete perfection. That is what androgyny means. A lot of people think that androgynous means no gender. Not true. I mean, there is no gender, but there are still essences, female, masculine, as an essence of expression of how source and creation work together as one. So um, when we're going to begin to understand creation in a very deep level, we will see that we can no longer do this. What this world needs is divine relationships, divine partnerships that will work in complementary aspects to each other. We're not meant to be opposites to each other anymore. Remember, love has no opposite. There are certain beings that we encounter that we kind of don't resonate with, and there's no such thing as pure magnetism that pulls us together. 
when two beings are meant to be together, they're magnetized together. And if that was really your, let's call it twin soul, you would magnetize towards each other. But in most cases, people, um, they complain, we can't be together, or it's not meant to be, uh, you know, they put it like this faded external conditions are to be blamed. Well, it's not true. Let's say you know somebody really resonates with your heart, you don't know what they are to you, yet your mind wants to make a connection with that association, and you limit yourself right away when you do that, instead of just feeling the intimacy and the unique expression that this relationship brings you. What is the expression that it brings you? What are the gifts, the qualities that you're developing in yourself because of that connection? I'm seeing that people are no longer asking themselves these questions. They don't have the values that are really important. Their only value is, is that my twin flame or not, period. And um, it's just so shallow, to be honest. I mean, there's so much diversity. Things are not black and white. Human mind likes to think like that, but we're becoming divinely human. Remember that. In the new, we're awakened to new senses. Everything is much deeper. And sometimes I'm noticing these people that are saying, me and my twin flame, me and my twin flame, and they're repeating it so much, so instrumentally, that I told you this before, guys. When you know yourself as the beloved, you have no other uh, need to, uh, to call yourself and your divine counterpart by a name twin flame. That's my twin flame. They have a name. They have a unique specifics. It's not just like you. And um, if you would read some of the paragraphs in Sally Kelly's book, you would see that how he describes basically these connections are not incarnating together at the same time because they're serving on a different level and they're holding this counterparts of the beloveds and when you understand this and how creation works you will have a deeper understanding of why you as a being already exist on these different levels on one level you're experiencing human relations on another you're experiencing maybe star <laughs> star origin relations and on another level you have your angelic connections again they're different and on some level you experience yourself as a completely androgynous form yet on another again different and as a twin soul, you serve all creation, all life and creation through that uniqueness. So it's time, my dear beloveds, to move away from those analytical minds, putting things in boxes. And why is that important? Not to be a smart ass or anything like that. But the importance of this is because a lot of people who desire to be in these beautiful relations, they're eager or they're yearning for something that doesn't have the proper magnetism that will bring them together or they have this infatuation in the mind that's not really a grounded embodiment um, journey of two souls alchemizing together and really co-creating because for co-creation you need magnetism two souls need to be magnetized together when you understand the alchemy and creation you will know this it needs to come through you and when you do that you understand how simple everything is and you will never need that longing or hoping for or you know wanting something to be something you will just release and surrender to the beauty and magic of creation and creation principles and how they work so this magnetism is needed first and then these two beings are looking in the same direction they have the similarity the sameness of purpose and that's what's important so a lot of the people um, it will be very beneficial for them to stop really hoping that that certain person needs to be with them and that something's just not happening. And yet they're so convinced this must be that. And there's no other. It's very superficial. You're not seeing all the relations that are important for your journey, everything that's happening on different levels and parallel realities and all the relations that you're living simultaneously, your different levels of you. And when you activate them in your human body one by one, it will start to be wider and wider, more expanded, no longer just these linear yes, no, black, white, twin flame, no twin flame, over, <laughs> game over, and I'm losing my interest, you know, <laughs> and um, you will understand that it's important because this planet needs the love that comes through the energy and the synergy of the beloveds. This means that your heart, higher heart essence is completely whole. It understands what you need on your journey, not just wishful thinking based, but also what your physical body needs. Let's say you're a woman and you're desiring a man to compliment you, physically know what is your compliment. In order for that, you need to know yourself, how you are. It's not your opposite, it will be your compliment, your divine partner. And when you have that, when you invite that in your life by becoming it, you will understand that on this level, in this density where we are now, creation works synergistically this way. Maybe on another level you will have different desires. 
but it is important and I see a lot of the times people put their human desires away because they have this fixated idea on this um, perfect, perfect match that will complete them and they will ascend together in heaven or, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying is that it's not grounded. It's not really being deeply in your purpose. It's not knowing yourself. When you really know yourself as the self and you understand your variation of creation, you will have no need to fix your, fixate yourself on some person, on another being. Also, you will recognize this being because they have the same frequency as you, the matching complement to you. And you just know that energy because you know yourself. You know your color, you know your toning of the soul, you know your unique song in creation. And that's what's really important because when two complementary energies come together, they work synergistically and they work in balance. They don't work in opposites. We had enough of opposite-based um, reality here. I mean, I call them, and we call them polarized opposites, but in, in fact, when our human mind relates to the word opposite, it has a very much distorted interpretation. So that's why the word complement is much better because we don't yet understand what an opposite truly means in creation. We have this idea that the opposites are, you know, the opposites attract and all this chemistry-based thinking. It's not really on a deep level true. So when we are soul-based, when we understand our soul, we will maybe more understand this through the energy of compliments. It might help us to really connect better and to not deny our desires just because um, somebody, let's say one person cannot fulfill that for us, they never can. We need to do that job. And there's a lot of beings that have heard, they were saying, I'm waiting for my twin flame to come so we can do our mission together. And they're just waiting and waiting and the whole of creation is already living itself and all this majesty and beautiful magic playing out and yet they wait. And um, you know, you do your thing. You are a unique swan, a beautiful swan of grace. Another swan can join you in their own perfection as you develop yourself. And you know what you want in this embodiment, in this body, in this life. You can have it all. You don't need to wait. And understand that these different levels we're tuning to also simultaneously we're always one with our core creation beloved self. It's never apart. We're always in communication. It's always there. And the moment you will know this, you will never ever feel separation again. And you will have different values in yourself for what you desire in your human self. You will have a desire to be a part of this new earth. What do you need to co-create with it? Well, balance masculine feminine energy first inside and without. It's important. Of course it is because we have these bodies. And we won't get there until we have these mind-based programs that are keeping us in the wishful thinking instead of the real embodiment alchemy process. So this is all I wanted to share today. Maybe it was a bit much, but um, it's how I feel when I get really in the subject. And um, please, beloveds, do take care of yourself and know that magnetism pulls things together naturally. You don't need to put uh, a strain on it that is unnatural. There's effort, there's devotion, but it's not something you go against just isn't and uh, when you're trying to define relationship stop yourself take a deep breath and say why am I doing this which part of me really needs definition it's not your soul <laughs> you know that okay have a beautiful time as always so much love wisdom and power take care and I'll talk to you soon